we're going to go over a couple of big O exercises. For this exercise, we're asked to approximate the runtime of the following code fragment in terms of n. If we have our code like this, and let's say our n is 20. Well, we are going to see how many times this runs. First, if j is equal to 1, um, sum is going to be plus plus. So that's one statement. And it's going to exit this iteration of our while loop with j equaling 2. The next iteration, it's going to be a second sum. It's going to be sum is going to be two, and now our j is going to be four. In our next loop, we're going to have sum is three, and our next value of j is eight. And the next iteration is four, and our next value is going to be sixteen. We're going to do it one more time, so we're going to have five, and our next value is going to be thirty-two. And we see that thirty-two is greater than 20 so we're going to break out of this loop and that is going to be the end of our code now we have one statement in here which is n so far our answer is just big o and then n but if we look at all of the values that we are going by the way we are incrementing the number of statements that we're doing this j value determines the number of iterations through this loop we're going to make and every single time we do this if we look at this graph of a log x, we can see that if we start at our y equaling zero, it's going to slowly grow bigger and bigger and bigger as this does. So our statements are going to continue logarithmically, and that's why we're going to have a big O log n. We're now in big O2, so this is the next self-check exercise. We're asked the same question and we have the following code. We have a single for loop, a statement right here, and a statement in here. Well, if you look at both of these, this else, this if statement only executes if this is true. So for example, if j is equal to one, this is not gonna execute, and this will execute. If it does execute, it's gonna execute this code, and then this code, but that's not really that big of a deal we can really look at all of this code inside of here as just a single n. And since we only have one for loop, in total, we are gonna have n. So our answer is O n. For our next problem, we have big O three. We have two for loops. First, we are going to look at our bottom for loop. All of this code from this bracket to this bracket is just going to be two n. When we look at our top for loop, we have two for loops inside of this bracket and this bracket. We are going to have n. And inside of this bracket and this bracket, we are going to have another end. So this equals to n squared. When we are comparing our n squared to 2n, we can easily see that n squared is bigger. So that is going to be our answer. For big O4, we have a for loop in here. And this is going to iterate n times. For this for loop, we have a n here and then another n outside here. So this one's also going to be n squared as our answer. For big O5, we look at this and we have two for loops. And this is going to go through our code one million times. So this statement is going to execute 1 million times. In here, it's a set value of how many times it's going to loop through. And in our outside loop, we have our n times, so we don't know that, which means we are going to be left with an n. And that is our answer.